Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I have a new toy. It is the iFlight Titan DC2. This is a 115mm quadcopter which is driving 2.3 inch props. As you can see here, it has the DJI HD Air unit, which is the standard one that allows SD card recording. There are other quadcopters which are really popular today. That includes the TransTech Beta, which is bigger than this. It's about 10cm wider than this frame. And it also houses the same standard size HD air unit. And we also have the GEPRC, which is smaller than the Beta. And it runs 2 inch props instead of 2.3 inch props. So it's less efficient than this. And we also have the Beta 95X. This is a very popular mini whoop style. Again, it's driving HD FPV but it's using the Vista, so it does not support HD recording on board with SD card. You have to record it off your DJI goggles, but it's more efficient than this one because it's running 2.5 inch props. So this is somewhere in between the GEPRC Rocket Plus and the TransTech Beta. Remember the Beta is running 2.5 inch prop, and the GEPRC Rocket Plus is running 2 inch props with the ducks. Whereas this one with the ducks is able to run 2.3 inch props. So the reason I get this is because of the efficiency which is in between these two quadcopters. And also I prefer to have the standard air unit which doesn't overheat like the Vista. So at a glance, you can see that it's very high quality. There are some 3D printed material for the antenna mouse here to protect the antenna. This is TPU, I believe. It's very flexible. And this one is PETG. It's a bit harder. So it adds as a side rail to protect the air unit. And the front is PETG, I believe. It's not TPU. It's not flexible. It's quite rigid and it protects the camera in front. So one thing I like about this one over the Beta 95X is that the camera is not on top like here, it's in the front. With this, you have to tilt the camera high up, otherwise you will see some of the props. And I do not like to have the battery on the bottom because every time you land, it squashes on the battery, which is not good for the LiPo. I may consider changing the standard antennas of the DJI, which is left-hand circular polarized to linear antennas to save weight, just like the TransTech Beetle. But that will mean I also have to run linear antennas on my DJI FPV goggles. And with that, I could run a bi-quad or some linear polarized patch antennas, which would be good for this type of antennas. Well, in terms of flight performance, it should be less efficient than the TransTech Beta as I mentioned before because it has a smaller prop 2.3 inch instead of 2.5 inch but it will have slightly better efficiency than the GEPRC Rocket Plus which is running 2 inch props. Of course for this Rocket Plus you could remove the ducts and run 2.5 inch and likewise with the DC2 I could remove the prop guards and then run 2.5 inch. But it's nice to have this type of ducted style prop guards and offer some kind of protection. All right, enough of rumbling. I'm gonna to head to the field, put on a 3S LiPo pack, and then show you a flight footage.
Well, that was the first flight of the iFlight DC2. I'm really impressed with the first FPV flight I have with it. And I'm using a 3S LiPo pack instead of 4S LiPo pack, so the flight time is pretty short. You could tell that I had to land in a hurry because I was so engrossed with the flight, enjoying every moment of it that I forgot about the flight time. In terms of performance, it's better than the Bite Frost in terms of penetration and range. If you look at the shrubs over there in the distance, if I fly my drone behind that using my pack shark system, I will get lots of static, but not with the DJI Air unit. In terms of the drone itself, although it's overweight, it's still very agile and has lots of power, so I'm happy with that. I will be testing the 4S LiPo pack here. This is a 4S 500mAh and this is a 3S 500mAh So hopefully I'll get more flight time with the 4S LiPo pack The model I've got here is the Bind M5 for the DSM-X To bind it to the DSM-2 This old transmitter here which is the DS7 I have to go to better flight Go to CLI command line and type bind equals to 5 Instead of bind equals to 9 as stated in the manual And that's about it out of the box, it flies great, no adjustments to the PID needed, so I'm really happy with that. And if you notice, the DJI goggles are using the stock linear antennas which are omnidirectional. And I'm so impressed that with the omnidirectional antennas, it has such a great range and penetration. As compared to my Bike Frost ground station, which has antennas maxed out with high gain antennas pointing in the direction where I was flying. but not with this one right off the box it has amazing range and penetration that's all i have for this video i hope you find the video information useful thank you for watching and see you again